Our first guest tonight is an Oscar-winning screenwriter, director, and actor with a new movie about, of all things, a shoe. Air opens in theaters April 5th. Please welcome Ben Affleck. <laughs> You. Very well. You must be on cloud nine right now. I am on the Jimmy Kimmel show. I, and that's not as why. good as it gets, my friend. That's not why. Uh, Come on. I'm oh, very before happy. I get into the movie, yeah, well, yes. I wanted to, first of all, thank you. Of course. Uh, you invited me and my wife, Molly, mm -hmm. to your house for Christmas for a I Christmas did. party. I can't promise it's going to, because, but you know. It was an experiment. You can't promise it's going to happen again? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, some awkwardness. In the yeah, scene. there was some yeah. awkwardness there. It did seem like yeah, you weren't quite as psyched about the party as everybody else was. But I... See, that's a common misconception about me. Yeah, I know. But, well, yeah. tell Go your ahead. face is really the thing. No. Listen, I have a very <laughs> unhappy-looking resting face. <laughs> this is me content. <laughs> That's how I, this is me amused. <laughs> hey, you know, I I can, that's how God made me. It's you don't not have to just punish about me that. For it. I think when I walked in, first, the first thing you told me was how much the tree cost. <laughs> <laughs> can you believe how much this tree cost? I'm turning into like that the old Grinch. guy. Like, you know how much, you know, like, yeah. we're going to heat the whole neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> but then, so anyway, I arrived first, my wife and I. And in fact, not only did I arrive first, I had to wait outside for about 15 minutes so I didn't arrive before the party actually started. <laughs> When we got there, you were very gracious. You and Jennifer greeted us at the door. We chatted for a couple of minutes, and then the door opens. Do you remember this? I do remember this. And then Jay Leno and his wife Mavis walk in, mm -hmm. and they come up, and they're, we're talking, and it's a little bit uncomfortable, and all of a sudden you go, do you remember what you said? I said something along the lines of, like, do you have some kind of a death blood feud? Yeah, don't something? you guys have, like, a feud or something? And. Uh, <laughs> And we stood there in shock, and then you left, and then we were left. I thought it'd be fun, like, you know, you get the, the two little fish in a different color, and you put them in the bowl, you know what I mean? <laughs> Have fun! Well, it was a Christmas miracle. <laughs> a little bit of, uh, of a payback for your late-night comics. <laughs> kind of well, thank you again for that, it and was Merry very Christmas fun. You guys you. were good sports. And I didn't, it didn't occur to me until there was a sort of, it's like, these gentlemen are both re more relaxed than this. I wonder, oh. <laughs> it was weird. It was weird. very exciting. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. It made it fun to tell everyone out. else, yeah. By the way, the movie is fantastic. It thank really is. And I'm you. not just saying that. And I'm sure, and I was thinking about this last night because I was studying. I didn't get to see you after the movie. And I barely saw you in the thing, and then, yes, it was, because it was like you were, you were surrounded by people telling you how much they love the movie. I know this because I was surrounded by people telling me how much I love the movie. I had nothing to do with the movie. I just went to see the movie. <laughs> Can you tell after a screening like that, after a big movie premiere, when you're at the party, can you tell just by everyone's reaction whether the, they love the movie or they're just blowing smoke up your ass? Uh, yeah, there's a couple of tells. What are the like, tells? One of them is like, you know, uh, this is my reel, it's on an IMDb, it's on a, 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 yeah, a yeah, drive, right. will you please take it? Another one is when they pitch you a thriller. Uh -huh. Another one is when you, like, they're like, you haven't minded that I've been waiting outside your house for three days. <laughs> Sometimes those events also attract, you know, people who are just sort of around those yeah. kinds of events. And so you can determine that fairly quickly because of the, the sort of distant uh, serial killer gaze that yeah. they have in yeah. their eyes. But your friends, the people you know, who you expect to come up and say something, can you just tell that there's a little more well, my friends just me all the time. They That's do. the deal we have. Okay. I'm like, don't tell me the truth. <laughs> I don't want it. You don't want, you don't need honesty at a party. <laughs> yes. yeah. No, I, I don't think you need notes at a premiere. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> if you go to someone's premiere and want to suggest changes. Does that happen? It's <laughs> too late at that point. That's not the time to offer feedback. <laughs> it Even isn't. if it is constructive, there's another time for that. Yeah, to be it's sort of like going to someone's wedding and telling them why she might not be right for you. <laughs> yeah, OK. <laughs> I see. OK, all right. Well, that makes a lot of sense. The uh, Phil Knight, you play Phil Knight in this yeah. movie. We're going to see a clip of that in a minute. Did Phil Knight, because I don't know if people are aware of how funny this movie is, did Phil Knight like the way you played him? Well, I look, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. As you may know, being the boss, 
when you work someplace, there's a tendency in the workplace, you kind of want to make fun of the boss, uh-huh. right? That's just part of it. And you kind of, I've been the subject of an occasional meme. Uh-huh. I'm not even a boss, I know how it goes. <laughs> and so I thought, ah, that's funny. And he's sort of a Buddhist, but he's a capitalist. And there has to be somebody kind of pressing against this deal. And I was very, very confident right up until the point where they were like, we think you should go up to Oregon and, and show Nike the movie and show Phil. And I was like, sure, terrific. And then I went up there and I flew up to Oregon and then I went into the theater and all of a sudden I felt like the guy who had been sent in to negotiate with ISIS, you know what I mean? <laughs> it was going to be like, you know, and I went in and showed the movie and I, and as I watched the end of the movie, now it's a very, listen, we res- it honors and respects Phil and what he did and making this deal and his bravery and it, it, the importance of Nike, but it has fun. I mean, mm-hmm. it's fun. Yeah. It makes a little, I play him. It, it's funny. I tried to be funny. Yeah. It is it funny. It didn't seem that funny when he was in the room. <laughs> And I thought, like, maybe the thing to do is just run. You know what I mean? Like, but I went out there, and actually, he was, I have to say, like, remarkably gracious. He liked and, it. And he did. Good. He, he, I mean, did he laugh? He, I wasn't in there with him. Oh, you were. He weren't. actually was really moved by the, um, you know, what really struck me was that he was really moved by because it's about 1984, a time when the company was in, a, it was kind of actually an underdog in basketball, and it was a sort of a bunch of friends, kind of crashing into each other and various ideas, trying to put something together and arguing and debating. And, and he was, he seemed to me to be somebody remembering a time in his life that was really like, I don't, I don't know what that time would be, that romantic, that period in your life where it's not yet defined, it might not yet have, you know, all come together, you're still risking something and, you know, you're there with your friends and you're bonded and he seemed really moved by He was like, of course you got a lot wrong. <laughs> it's, it's inspired by. Right, it's not yeah. a documentary, but he said you, he, he was very kind. He said the status, the spirit. I think a lot company. of people are going to feel like that watching this. It makes you, it is a love letter to the 80s and in, in really specifically to those that year of the 80s. So particular. I'm going to tell you something. You started out this movie with a glimpse of our rival high school basketball team in Las Vegas no. with their exact uniforms and their exact sign. And I was really? like, oh my God, I am very much on wow. board with this. Oh, we picked yeah. that just because Sonny was, he liked to gamble. Yeah. You know, he, would, he was a big That uh, was crazy. To... I couldn't yeah. believe that. Yeah. All my cousins went to that school. It's no nuts way. that you had that there. Yeah. That's wild. You we have actually... so many great performances in this. I mean, so many. I can't even pick who I like the best. You were great in it. Um, oh, Chris Messina, Chris Tucker. Uh, tomorrow we have, uh, we have like the whole cast. Jason and we have Bateman's amazing. Jason Bateman, who's yeah. great. We Viola have Viola De- Davis. Greatest. And Julius, her husband, who is Mayor. wonderful. Yeah. We have like the whole, all the great people from the cast on the show. This week, you're, lo- you're you're leaving someone out. What do you mean? Yeah. Le- no, I'm no. I mean, there's you know. Well, I mean, there's this you know. Matt Damon's the lead of the movie. He's the no, star. I said all the best. I said all the great people from the <laughs> film. I wasn't. I didn't mean all the people. Look, you know, man, I, I don't. Just, I don't want this to be. I understand that you have your feuds and your. Yeah. That's your person. Yeah, I had one in your <laughs> lobby at, at Christmas too. Look, yeah. Man, uh-huh. Yeah. Matt is a friend of mine. I know I you guys are friends. Brilliant. I don't understand it, but. Uh, well, okay. I mean, Fair it's enough, just. I just is, don't. You know. I just. It would. It, honest to God, it would mean a lot to me uh, if you would just like ask him one question about the movie. You know, he worked really hard on it. And I'll tell you what, I can get him on the phone right now. I, so you can call him up. Can you call someone who, call Ryan Seacrest or something? That would be fun. I'm sure Ryan would love to hear from Ryan's him. Ryan's you know? not in it. Please? All right, fine, call him. This will be, you know what, this will be your wedding gift. Uh, I didn't get you anything. I was so wondering. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah this will be it. I know I had a year. Just <laughs> let's just get it over with, though. And I'm only asking him one question, okay? okay? I'm getting him on the phone right now. What am I going to ask him? OK. <laughs> Of course, he's probably available. <laughs> hey, guys! What's up, everybody? I'm on the show! Yes! I'm on the show! Yeah! Not really. Not really. Yeah! Not Zoom really. style, on the show. No, Very much on, on the, the show. show. Definitely on the show. He's not on the thank show. Thank you. And, and Jimmy, he... thank you for calling. Uh... Hey man, that was that was very big of you. Uh, that, whatever. This is a gift to Ben and JLo only, not to you. Well, so. uh, you know. Be great. Well, I thank you anyway, uh, and uh, I'm ready for your question. All right, uh, fine, okay. Um, all right, so you play Sonny Vaccaro, who I have to admit you captured pretty well. How do you approach playing a real person compared to playing a fictional character, okay? Very good. 
He wanted a question, I gave him a question. Wow, that's uh, nice. That's actually a really good question. Thank you. Uh, okay, so the thing is, when you uh, approach any role as an actor, the first thing you do is you're gonna wanna talk to, if you can, the person that you're gonna play. You wanna talk to the people around the, uh, the person. Oh no, oh wow, it seems like we're having a connection problem with the Wi-Fi. Matt, can you hear us? Matt, we lost you when you were talking about your approach to uh, acting, I think. I like to spend time not just with the person oh, that I'm playing, but also the people around. Just God, he froze again, that is a shame. We don't get to hear his philosophy about acting. Uh, You're better than this. Is he still stealing the neighbor's Wi-Fi? Is that, uh... Because... So acting oh. is an art. Uh, it's not a science. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Go on, go on. Hang on. Wait, is something wrong? Did you? Uh, no. Matt. Um, did you put a filter on me? No. What is going on? Are you doing this, Jimmy? You know, I think you must have hey. accidentally turned on a filter with one of your big fat fingers or something like that. You no, know, I knew you were going to pull something dumb like You're such a child. I'm so sick and tired of dealing with your So why don't you just, wait, am I a hot dog? Am I, am I an actual hot dog right now? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that even a real question? You know what, why don't you take your little question and your little show and shove it up your big hairy ass? <laughs> okay, well I apologize for the profanity. He yeah. is out of control and I can't, I really can't believe you hang out with that person. I'm really disappointed. Oh, I'm so sorry we lost the connection, but um, well, you will know what, we won't try to get him back. Ben Affleck is here. We'll be back with a look at air after this. You got a name for it? For what? The Michael Jordan line. You want to make him this offer you're talking about? Damn well better have a Michael Jordan line. Yeah, uh, well, there was a thought that um, Pete actually thinks we should call it Air Jordan. Hmm. I don't know. Seriously? I, I, well, maybe it'll grow on me. That is Ben Affleck. Person in I air. should also say, I have no reason to believe that Phil Knight did not like the Knight Air Jordan idea. I just thought it was funny at oh, the time. Oh, is that true? Really? Yeah. Oh, may, a, lot, it's, a lot of it's just fiction. I see. Yeah. Interesting. Which it turns out, you know, you just think, well, I'll never run into this person, and this is funny. <laughs> Probably like being a comic. And, uh, and then you got to sit there and show him the movie. Well, I'm glad he liked it. I, I, he was okay with the hair, too. That was good. Actually, the hair is more... It was more like the last duel, Strawberry Red. And I was like, I'm not doing that again. Uh -huh. uh, you know, <laughs> the whole story of that movie was that. So, uh, so I, I, I darkened it. It made it a little darker. It was a wig, but I wanted it to look like it could plausibly. You know what I loved about the way you did it? And I wonder if you thought about this when you I'm did sure it. I'm sure I did. Because um, you talk so much about the shoe, the shoe, the shoe, the shoe, but then we don't even see the shoe until very close to the end of the movie. And it's almost like Jaws, like seeing the shark for the first time. You see the shoe and you go, wow, that is a great shoe. Well, it made me realize when people cheered when they saw the shoe. Yeah. Like how much tailwind we were benefiting from telling this story of like all of people's history and their memories and that shoe and what it means. And, and really, you know, I just was never going to show Jordan because he's just too famous, too meaningful. I try to show you somebody that's not Michael Jordan and convince you, like, that's Michael Jordan. You did it very Media, cleverly. You're going to go, well, it's all going to see him from the he's back. It's just and like, you know, in the ether. Yeah, you see the back of it, you know, but it's like, it's about all the people around him. He's kind of too, too big for it in a way, you know, and it, it, you bring to it your imagination. We show clips of the real Michael Jordan doing what is unmistakably him. Because like you try to fake that, you take out away from what it what is he really does mean, which is extraordinary. You know? You uh, at his suggestion had Viola Davis play his mom, Dolores Jordan. Suggestion, yeah. Uh, sugge had his, I, <laughs> his insistence. I feel like Michael makes suggestions. <laughs> I don't know. I can't pretend to be uh, I'm gonna sit here and act like, yeah, we're friends. Like I'm totally intimidated by him and I don't know. I'm running into him a couple of times and I was gonna do the movie and I was like, listen. Could I sit down with you and ha just for an hour because I'd like to talk to you about this thing. I got this script, and if you don't want me to do it, I just won't do it. Forget it. Like just from a respect point of view and also a self-preservation. But I can't think of anything <laughs> stupider than making this movie and Michael Jordan be like, "This is," right, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So I, I said, "Look," and, and once he seemed 
open to it, I was like, look, I have to, you know, it's, it's really ultimately kind of a fable and there's going to change stuff and we have to make it into a, a dramatic story. But what are the things that are fundamentally important to you and that are like, absolutely, you cannot violate these truths because I will not. And he's it, very telling me he wasn't about like, I did this, I did. He, he talked about other people. He was like, uh, George Raveling needs to be included in the story. Mm -hmm. He's vital to. That's a I crazy think. story. Howard White has to be in this movie. And then he talked about his parents. And my initial idea was kind of vaguely to have him, I don't want to give it away, but he was going to be the voice that, that asserted his value. And then he talked about his, his, his father. He's his father, the best personality of anyone he ever knew. And Julius is the perfect guy for that. And he talked about his mom. Yeah. And this is a guy who's so intimidating, so powerful. So like just sitting across from him, you just feel kind of like, ah, uh, you know? And, and he had this look of, of kind of reverence. And he talked about his mother what she meant and how he, he was like, I didn't want to go to Oregon. I would have signed away my rights for a red Mercedes for life. That red like, Mercedes. What? Really? He's like, yeah. My mom told me this is, you know, hey, my mom worked at a bank. You know, he, and he talked about such respect. I said, she sounds fascinating. Wow, do you think I could call her up? And he was like, you could try. <laughs> <laughs> Got it, message heard. Um, but he was, and I said like, then I made the classic error of saying, so who do you think might be? It has to be Viola Davis. I was like, it ha does have to be Viola Davis. Did Viola she know? She currently has two lines in the draft. Did she know so, it had to be her? Well, first, Matt and I had to write a part that was worth Viola Davis. There's right. not a better actor than Viola Davis. That's true. That I know of, so. Yeah. You know, we had to do that. And then, and then, believe me, when I sent it to her, I was like, yeah, I want you to do it, but Michael Jordan wants you to play his mom, you know, because I thought that might have a little more impact. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> than, uh, yeah. Did Michael's mom ask for a piece of the movie? <laughs> ask for a percentage of the gross? She has not asked for anything. She's not. She's oh, a, she's, well, right. a, she's a, 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 by all accounts, a, a very extraordinary woman. Yeah. You, I, I was thinking about if my mom was involved in any of my contract negotiations and how poorly that would go. <laughs> Is your mom not a good negotiator? And I don't know, <laughs> because I keep her out of that stuff. But it is really remarkable. It's some story. And um, listen, think about all the, you know, just in the NBA, then think about all pro sports or entertainment or oh, the world where in a lot of these communities, marginalized communities, young African-American men who have been historically disadvantaged, then thrust into this world where they're that, negotiating with these massive companies in radical shift of lifestyle. You don't have somebody there guiding you you know, looking out for you. And really, I realized when I talked to him, this movie is just an homage to, the, to Dolores Jordan and all the moms who have played this role, you know, throughout history and how important and pivotal that role is. Because you, listen, you know, even just from my smaller point of view, just getting famous, like with Matt, you can see, you can go crazy. Can you One of us survived. <laughs> I'd prefer it if you didn't mention him anymore, but um, I did get you a little gift um, before we go. Um, this is a little something that um, uh, you can open now if you want, which probably would be the, for no, the best. No, that seems like it might be best for the show. Yeah, it might be best for the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> seeing as how it's entirely for the show, you'll probably leave it in your dressing room. But this is something that um, when our love blossomed, um, one of our viewers painted this, um, this for us. And, um, and this is, um, I would like you to keep this in your own. <laughs> See that? That's that doesn't look very that's, that's not AI. Thing. That's not AI. That's pre-AI. That's all. What natural. I like is that you've never been bitter. <laughs> you know, you've never held it against me when we broke up. You never blamed. You know, you've been very kind to my yeah. wife. Yeah, it's listen. very gracious of you. Yeah, well, you and know it's what? Just I'm really you were an up. inadequate lover, and that's just what that is. <laughs> and you've been Ben Affleck, everybody. Air is his movie. Go see it. It opens theaters April 5th. We'll be back with Nicholas Bro.